Scotchy scotch, 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 scotch. I love scotch. Warning for underage listeners. This is an adult-oriented podcast. There will be frequent references to kink, sex, crude language, and various other grotesqueries. If you're under 18 and looking for answers and upfront advice about sex, please visit scarletteen.com. Also, for the dude bro listeners out there, this is nerdy shit. Go away. Welcome to Gotham Press Podcast. This is a verbal orgy about anything like the Grafenberg spot. The difference between Star Trek and Star Wars. The finer points of throwing a pair of floggers and just whatever the hell we find to talk about. That said, if you have a desire to learn these and many more kinktastic nergasms, stay tuned. Welcome to Gotham Press the Gotham Press! Wow. This is awesome, and, and Greedy's here. And, and well, Shock Dog. Shock Dog, thank you again for joining us. I'm happy to, gentlemen. Thanks for coming back, Shock. Yeah, Greedy, we're not too happy about. But thank you, Shock. <laughs> I'll remember that, awesome. You mm-hmm. remember everything. You're kind of like an elephant like that. Mm-hmm. There's other ways I'm like an elephant, too. Clumsy? Though, I wasn't going to say that. If I can speak out of turn, he forgets turkey necks in the uh, <laughs> ice chest. So oh, Jesus Christ. He doesn't I'm remember never everything. That. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Because he'll take care of that tomorrow. And oh, yeah. He will. Yeah. We'll have to hold you off before you come back into the house. Bleach is our friend, gentlemen. Bleach do, is our do friend. We, do we have a hazmat container here? <laughs> <laughs> There's a disposable facility off of Buck Owen, so let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, road trip tomorrow morning. Oh God! I wonder if they'll be open New Year's Day. Probably not. How long? How long has it been since we've recorded, guys? Oh God, it's been almost a year. Not that long. It hasn't it? Hasn't God? I hope not. Now Podcast you're addict. I must consult the consult the Oracle. Well, let me tell you, it's good to have you back. Well, you know, it's good to be back. It's good to be had. But here's the thing. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Uh, well, Greedy's been saying for months now, we need to record, we need to record, we need to record. And I've just been like, okay. And not, you know, going through with it. But of course, I kind of blame him. <laughs> yeah, apparently, uh, I am the be all end all to it's your fault. At least you know this now. Yeah. Procrastination. Let's get right on that. <laughs> Later. <laughs> After this. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's. It's been a good time, though. Yeah. We have, since the last time we recorded, we moved to a new location. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we have a much larger dungeon space. Uh, Shock built it all by hand. Well, not not without help. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, it was a second job for about six weeks, true, but not without help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the local community did great. Yes. Oh, that's, yeah. why, that's why we love our local community here, right? Absolutely. Yeah. They're just phenomenal people. We've uh, done a pretty good job of vetting out the creeps. Not here? Not here. <laughs> well, my beautiful bride, Ms. Susan, and I have been involved in this community since 1999. And we've had certainly had periods of time where um, other people felt as vested in the community as we are. But it's been a long time. And it is, the last couple of years, it's been amazing how much other people have contributed with their time, with their energy, with their enthusiasm. Uh, creating new events, giving people new outlets for things that, that aren't in my field of purview. So um, they give people new opportunities to seek and seek peers and education. And there's been very few times when we've been as, as happy or felt as blessed about the involvement in the community from, uh, from others. And it's, it's a really good time. It's a very golden age for us, we think. So speaking of the community that you helped build up and all that, I like to I like to think of a shepherding more shepherding. than anything else. Uh, the, the the community that you shepherded, you have a star pupil at this point. The local local here with the oh. SoCal master slave. Oh yes, yes, yeah. We've been we've been blessed in Bakersfield that um, though within the large grandiose communities of L.A. and Frisco and San Diego and uh, with enormous uh, attendance and involvement, a lot of them will look at us and go. There's a community in Bakersfield? Yeah. <laughs> and, there, and there has been for a long time. But um, what's put us on that sort of world stage to an extent is we've been very blessed that um, our, our very own Master David and Slave Bren uh, secured the title for South uh, Southern California Leather, and, uh, Leather Slave and Master yeah. for 2017. Their reign is coming to an end soon, although they'll be trying for another title, of course. They're going to be trying for the uh, uh, for the Southern 
South Southwest. South, Southwest. 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 Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and hopefully good luck with them in that. But oh, in, the, yeah. in the meantime, they've been acting as ambassadors for us um, every where they've traveled, which has been I think on both coasts on, yes. during this last year and an enormous amount of events in the the Southwest certainly. Um, and they represent us very well, and they're they're incredibly kind people, and they're generous, and they're generous with their time. And I think the one the one drawback to them having won was suddenly we had to give them up to the world at large, and we didn't get to see them as much. And there's that's always a sacrifice that we're willing to make. But damn it, they don't come as often as we want them to. Not, at least not for the time being. Not for the time being, but. The, what's going to happen is when they win that next title, we will never, <laughs> ever see them. It's yeah. like, do they still live in Bakersfield? <laughs> it's like, well, I know they did at some point. They're still receiving mail here, so we're going to continue to take the publicity. <laughs> like, hey, hey, their address is still the Bakersfield address, damn it. Damn straight. Incidentally, it's uh, it was July when we recorded last. July when we recorded last? Yeah. So it's been about six months. Yeah. Yeah, six months. It, it's, it's definitely felt like a year. We've crammed so very much into the last six months yeah. actually no i tell you that that's the last time we posted the last time we recorded anything was just prior to may because it was mm-hmm. before i went to Doncon. Ooh, nine mm. months nine months yeah we could, we could have had a baby post. huh we oh, could have fuck. had a baby uh, well Red. i don't know if <laughs> i could have a podcast baby <laughs> okay, they, well, they're all like, I don't know if that's physically possible. None of us are Arnold Schwarzenegger. Red, 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 red. Red, be on, red on being Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, that too. But the, the governator does not do kink. <laughs> do you know? Do you? No. Okay. So we can't say that he does or doesn't. He only does maids. He doesn't do kink. I'm, oh, <laughs> God. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. I've missed this. I have too. This this is fun. This is fun. So so podcast world, we did not pod fade. We've just been pod so fade? extraordinary. Yeah, pod fade. I've never That's... heard that term. Is How pod go- is pod ghosting a thing? Pod ghosting, that's that's kind of like where you where you just suddenly ghost your ex, you know. We'll be back soon, know you're, and you uh-huh, don't. You never come back. <laughs> no, um, we'll pod fading is, uh, is, is where suddenly the stress gets to you, and you decide to skip an episode or two, and it becomes a few more episodes. We, we genuinely have wanted to be here, but stress, uh, well, no, not stress, schedules. Schedules and life. Okay, life gentlemen, happens. When things are important, you make time. She is very important. She is. My mistress. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Moving on. Moving on? Mm-hmm. Do we have a topic for the uh, after, for the evening, gentlemen? You know, it was just kind of a, hey, where have we been? What have we been doing? And why has Greedy kept us away from the podcast world for so long? <laughs> Once again, all my fault. Again, you have to understand. Well, I don't think the audience is privy to that conversation. That was that was before. If you heard the intro, he talked about his scotch use. <laughs> I love my scotch. Shock Doc brought over a, uh, a bottle of Glenfiddich 14, and this is this is a very fine scotch. I'm I'm very happy with this. Thank you, sir. Thank You're you for welcome. sharing. Quite well. Uh, I I I do enjoy a scotch. I enjoy scotch every what. Two or three weeks, typically. I, I don't drink every day. And I don't like that. Anymore, definitely. <laughs> I quit drinking for good. Now I drink for evil. It's way more fun. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the, this this Glenfiddich 14. It's very smooth, very, very easy going down. It's quite There's tasty. There's not a hell of a lot of burn to it. It's It's got a nice little subtle smoky flavor. It's very nice. You know, folks, when you're seeking a, a, a nourishing refreshment, you always want to use the caveat, you know, it doesn't burn a lot, don't Because that. <laughs> that's how you know it's really good. Burns just a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Only when you pee, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael, but see your proctologist because you, my friend, may have a condition. Wouldn't that be a urologist? <laughs> I've been drinking this evening. I certainly hope you're not going to see a proctologist about that problem. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, someone's going to milk the prostate. Come on, you get a professional. <laughs> they make toys for that, sir. <laughs> so I'm not sure you uh, practice with on a regular basis. 
Actually, yes. I didn't. I wasn't joking. I'm sure you have. I am not either. <laughs> the it prostate is, is our friend, gentlemen. The prostate is our friend. Gentlemen, gentlemen in listener land, become comfortable with your prostate. <laughs> Explore your prostate. It's it's more rewarding than you know until you try. Also, don't be afraid to have your ladies help you. Oh yeah, so yeah, definitely. This is what buddies and pals are good for. <laughs> Remember, um, <laughs> friends are friends and pals are pals, but buddies sleep together. Wait, what? Hold on. No, no, greedy. Friends are friends and pals are pals, but buddies sleep together. Greedy, we are not buddies. So is it that uncomfortable conversation? But buddies, is that an, nope. is it that uh. uncomfortable conversation when you go, well, can I have your phone number? After all, you have touched my prostate. Oh my god. Uh, at, at this point in my life, there's only been one person to touch my prostate and she is she is a phenomenal woman. And listener land, he is just trying to get points. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Score points wherever you can, people. Well, also, so whenever you may be listening to this, uh, so you all know, we are recording on New Year's Eve. New Year's 2017. Eve. 2017. 12, 31, 17. Yeah. What's what's this year's equivalent to the Y two K crash? Is there is there any big scare this year? We elected a moron for president. <laughs> well, aside from that, oh. All right. Russia? No, 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 no. Uh, North Korea, North Korea. What about North Korea? Because I don't keep up with the politics. Apparently, apparently they've got nukes that are a- able to travel to the the very edge of the Western United States as well as uh, Japan, China, well, well, etc. They have nuclear technology, and they have been setting off explosives, and they have rockets. Whether or not they can miniaturize that explosive and then put it on that ICBM and accurately fire it, those are three huge hurdles still. Mm. So we don't know that that's the case, but let's hope not. I wonder if Kim Jong-un is going to hear this. (laughs) I don't think he listens to American media that much. Kim Jong-un, my haircut does not... Prescribed to your laws. Your wait, what? Way to show them. There, there are. I want to say, I want to say, it's like uh, eighteen legal haircuts for men to have in North Korea. If you want to be one with the uh, the uh, committee, as it were, then you need to have one of the approved haircuts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And point of order, uh, Kim Jong Un's is not one of those prescribed haircuts. Well, he's the fearless leader. He doesn't have to. Yes, yes. He he invented the sun. I got a feeling we've gotten <laughs> off on a tangent. I don't know what you're talking about, Shock. He's going to appear here and kill us all. No, he's not. <laughs> Our fearless orange leader is going to save us. <laughs> yeah, that's not really going to happen either. But I, I have faith in the American military to be... To be? To be. To, to be, be, to be, or uh, not to be. <laughs> there for us. There, okay. there for us? All of us? Okay, we'll see. <laughs> well, me in shock. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know where I'm going. I know where you're going. Actually, that's a good lead-in to a conversation that Shock and I were having earlier. Uh Uh-oh. I was explaining to uh, Captain Awesome that um, being exceptionally Caucasian and being in a blue-collar business, I often run into this phenomenon that if you haven't witnessed it firsthand, uh, then you're probably not a white guy. So white guys tend to do this thing where... They look around, and as long as nobody has any ovaries and or any kind of actual uh, mel- melatonin to their skin, nope. they realize no pigment. no pigment to their skin. They realize it's okay. Us white guys can can be uh, just talk openly, right? So I have this thing I've been meaning to write. I haven't written it down yet, but it is a entitled "A Casual Racism and Misogyny in a Conversation Between Two White Guys." Whereas I was doing some work for a customer the other day, and because we're both white, he just casually happened to mention that he had hired me to do it because he didn't want it to look like some Mexican had done it. Well, let's break that down. Let's just start with that. Let's break that down for a moment. That implies that anybody to him with any kind of olive complexion to their skin is quote unquote Mexican and therefore lesser. And... You'll find that's really the strategic point here, is lesser than us, the other being lesser than us. A little later on in the conversation, he was talking about a cruise he and his wife had taken, and he came up on the fact that they had intended a comedy show, where he immediately pointed out to me that the comedian was black. 
not because it had anything to do with the jokes, but because we're two white guys, obviously let's point out when someone in the room isn't white. That's an important thing to know. We have to establish everybody's race, everybody's religion. We have to know where they at so that we can put them in these convenient little grooves so that we know that they're lesser than. So the convenient grooves is you can just walk over them smoothly, right. right? Right, right. There's us, there's us white guys, and then there's the others who are all below us. And you can't see my hand gesturing. The white guys obviously being higher and everybody else including women being lower. As part of that conversation, he was talking about there was a lot of gambling on the ship, so they had um, uh, done some bingo. And <laughs> he was talking about the fact that he got close to a win, but some old bitty won at the last moment, beat him to the punch of yelling bingo. Hashtag misogyny. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hold, hold on. For our younger listeners, what is an old bitty? Uh, an old bitty is any woman that is um, slightly older than you are, and a bitty implies um, that they're just a worthless gossip. Oh. Okay. God damn, I hate and this world. What is what is amazing about that, that shorthand for misogyny is it tells us several things. One, he believed he was owed that win in bingo. That was his money. And some woman had the nerve to steal it from him. How dare she? And so conveniently, let's box her in as being old, therefore worthless, and as being a biddy, therefore lesser than. Well, at least All in a brief little conversation of a, just a handful of tiny words linked together. <laughs> well, because naturally, we all assume women are lesser than men are. Well, here's my thing. At least he didn't run off and just like beat her over the head and take her winnings. I mean that was very white, but uh, very nice of him. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the, it's just a phenomenon that I, I see. I sometimes forget because spending a lot of time around the community, where people really are nice, they are nice, and they don't. They're not really busy breaking everybody down into those kinds of subcategories. My, my mother was terrible about that. My mother was a horrible racist, loved her to death, but everybody had to fit in a category. If you weren't Southern and Baptist and white. You she had under? to mention it. No, she had to mention it. If she said Bob, you knew Bob was Southern and Baptist and white. If she mentioned Tim, she'd mention Black Tim. Huh. Or Tim the Jew. Wow. Or Tim the Catholic. Or one of those goddamn Italians. <laughs> <laughs> not, not just one of, those, one of those goddamn... Wow, okay. She, everybody had to be in a category. It gave her this feeling that she was in control. And it gave her this incredibly poor, very poorly educated woman from the South. It gave her this feeling of power to be able to categorize everybody else as lesser than. Well, here's my, my view on that. Coming from a black family, we do something similar. But did, they, did they know you were black? <laughs> You're black? Anyway. You know what? <laughs> yes, yes. Catherine Austin is a black man. <laughs> Coming from a black family, we we did something similar. Not quite to that extreme, though. It was usually more so of uh, them white people. They just don't mm -hmm. seem to understand mm -hmm. what we do because they just feel that we're not doing it right. That's usually what, what I got was, hey, such and such down the street white person, they saw me doing this and they just had to come over and correct me. Obviously, they didn't know that we were doing it the way that we've always done it. Okay, so so this this uh, racial prejudice transcends all. Oh yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's every race has their own version thereof. <coughs> okay, but, so so but, something. Huh, but <coughs> as far as coming from white people, Caucasians, <coughs> I think it's more so of hey, it's different, and we're above you all. Okay, not hey, it's just different. They don't understand what we're doing. It's, it's different, and we have to teach you, poor as Shock was saying, others, mm -hmm. you know, the right way of doing things. So, so you're you're basically paraphrasing what I've been saying since I was like eight. Every race has their own little piece of shit that needs to be dealt with. Yes, but it's just a matter of we like to deal with our own shit. Not hey, God, I would love to deal with some shitty white people. <laughs> oh no, no, no. This is it's the white people, even the shitty white people, that they feel that they have to deal with everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's imposing upon their their comfortable place at the top of society. How dare mm. you come to this country that we 
that we invaded. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of a good, a good well, way to put well, it. But, but that logic was uh, uh, Manifest Destiny. God gave us this country. Mm. Hey, and hey, we hey. saved it from the heathens where they were wasting it and weren't tearing it apart and hey. digging out the coal and pulling out the oil and te- cutting down the forest. They were just living here. Hey, what the heathens. fuck was wrong with those people? Would you like some smallpox blankets? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're horrible. I you're am. Horrible, you're horrible. I am. But it's it's this it's this thing you know everybody sees it I'm sure when when you're you're in some category you're around family or other people that think they're like you and you get to see them slip and drop that facade of social acceptance and yeah. what I see with other uh, mostly redneck hillbilly and I was I'm purebred hillbilly I was raised by hillbilly so this is a, a thing I'm very familiar with. Whereas so so shock, what you're saying is you were bred and born to be a hillbilly. Oh, absolutely. Right. My my mother was from Oklahoma. My mo- father was from Arkansas. As I like to say, I'm a purebred hillbilly. Do you have? Uh, well, you don't have the accent anymore. Can you still do the accent? Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Michael. <laughs> now, my mama, my mama was as sweet as she could be because little old southern women have to be polite when they talk about that N-word guy living down the street or that them they're Mexicans or etc. Okay, but I, I apologize. But, Please but, continue. But they're southern; they must be polite, Michael. And politeness in all things is considered socially acceptable. <laughs> all right. Please continue what you were saying before, if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's it's this facade that all of us white guys think the same. Mm-hmm. It's the right way to think. And the reason we're not usually saying it is since the um, uh, the civil rights movement in the 60s, mm-hmm. it's become socially unsep- unacceptable to say it in public. But we all know this is how we really feel. And that is what comes sliding out when they can look around over both shoulders and not see anybody whose skin is darker than theirs. Oh, it's just us white guys. We can all be honest with each other, right? We can all toss around the N-word like it's nothing. We can denigrate Mexicans and and treat women like they're children that we have to watch over every minute. Because it's ingrained in the notion that, well, that's the right way to think. Everything else is just bullshit that we're we're pretending about. And I think it it makes the world a lesser place. It's it's a thing that, that I can't change the world. But I have grown children, and one thing I think I did well was I tried to teach them to judge people on their merits, not whether or not they have ovaries, not whether or not their skin color is different than theirs. Is this an individual kind? Is this individual giving? Are they generous? Are they are they good to you? Are you good to them? These are what we this is what we should judge people on, not not the other superficial bullshit. Is this individual a human being? Basically. Yeah. Well, see, that's one problem with certainly the white people I was exposed to as a childhood, and I still I still see them, bump, uh, like the gentleman I was talking to, is that if you're not one of us, you're you're the the lesser than is you are a form of subhuman. Yeah. No. And, and I, you, I don't consider myself a subhuman. You shouldn't <laughs> consider yourself a subhuman. You're you're as qualified to be a human being as I am, but that is what is implied, and that's what gives them that sense of power. And unfortunately, in this country, for a long time, they've, that power has been a thing, and it still is. You know, you can, in my personal opinion, you can look at our current attorney general and, and he's stoked in racism from the South and realize that if there's anything that helps promote social justice or prob- possible equality within policing so that we're not just casually killing unarmed black youths because they scare us, well, that has to be stomped out. We must get rid of that. That's that's still um, very much instituted in the country, unfortunately. But the well, way the way I tried to change it is I tried to raise children that that saw the world differently than my parents saw it. My having, mother, my father was the least racist person I've ever met, but my mother was terribly racist. Having personally met and talked to both of your children at end, I I gotta say thank you for raising them like that because they are they are quality people, quality adults. You you and you and your wife both did a phenomenal job there. We tried. We try. So, greeting. Yes. You and I have lived together for a while now. You've told yeah, me... It's been, it's been a few years now. You've told me stories about your family. Yeah. Now, they weren't so much the racist so much as the religious. They were, they were religious and they were uh, 
closet racist, if you will. Um, closet racist. Again, yeah. the facade, right? The, yeah, there was there was the facade of we are better, but we're not going to talk about those people like that. And it, it always it always fucking ate at me. I mean, I, I had. Can we pause for a moment? Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a moment. I just said. Hey there, Gotham Press listeners. This is Captain Awesome. Just letting you know that in the future, we will be doing our episodes twice monthly. So I just wanted to say thanks for listening. And now back to the show. I, I had I had a few black friends, um, but they were only people that I had met at my high school. You know, since anti-segregation laws and all that, I, I went to a predominantly white school. And uh, there were maybe 10% of the entire student body was um, black, Hispanic, whatever. So I, I had very minimal exposure to anybody other than white people. Uh, most of the Hispanics stuck together, most of the blacks stuck together, and there was very seldom any sort of mingling between. Um, my family, uh, they, they went to a church that pretty well kept the, the same standard. Had, had the laws not dictated that there be people of color at the school that I was at, then I probably ne- never would have met a single black person or Hispanic person or Oriental or whatever whatever the hell would have been there. Yeah, none of them would have been there. It was, it was always, with, with my family, it was always an attitude of, we have to pity them, we have to, we have to do what we can to help them, and it was never treat them like they're fucking people. And I think that's what, that's what tore at me the most. Uh, a couple of black guys that I was friends with, they were fucking awesome. I mean, they they were they were cool, you know. They 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 were themselves. They weren't afraid to be themselves. And in a sea of of just total prejudice, it was it was refreshing to see somebody that doesn't give two shits about what anybody else says. They they didn't try to act like like what other other people expected them to be. There wasn't any of that bullshit that I always heard from the the uh, local white supremacy. Yes, a massa and all that shit. It Wait, was the local the lo- <laughs> hold on the local white supremacy in the town that I grew up in. There were two groups. Okay. There were there were the KKK and there were the Aryan Brotherhood. And these are very real groups. They are very real. We hate everybody that's not white. And I got exposed to that far more than I wish I had as a child. Oh, and I understand it. it was just it was surprising when you said it's so casual, like the local, like oh yeah, every every town has a chapter of that. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be shocked if most towns didn't. But well, here's the thing. I, I I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that well, was... well, here's the thing. Uh, when I grew up in Indiana, mm-hmm. I had no clue that that was like one of the largest concentration of KKK members was no shit. not far from me. Like not in not in Indianapolis, but like downstate a little bit. Yeah, I yeah. was not aware of that at all until I moved away from there. And everybody's like, "How did you survive?" I'm like, "What do you mean, how did I survive?" Like a kid. Yeah, yeah. I, I got I got the other side of that stick. I got the side that was uh, not so friendly. So I got was, the carrot. You got the stick. Yeah, yeah. You got the carrot. Oh, so well, that's why you ended up being a, racist. You, that's, that's why you ended up being uh, uh, submissive, though. <laughs> Because you sure, enjoyed we'll that go stick. with that. We'll you, go with you that. You enjoyed that stick that You much. had that exposure I did. Is yeah. They saw you as one of them. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. they would be openly, blatantly racist and homophobic and misogynist. And they just let all the true feelings fall out because we're all one and the same, right, pal? I, I suppose I suppose I lack that, that gene of uh, embarrassment of maybe I should fit in because I, I never agreed with them either. And... I'm yeah, but, looking back on it. I'm very glad that I had my own head on my own shoulders. I, I was always confused um, at that notion that um, because of a, pers- a color of a uh, person's skin, that they were automatically lesser than I was. They were they were automatically mm-hmm. subhuman. It seemed to be my mother's take on it, um, and it just always puzzled me as a child. And I never bought into it. I always questioned it. I never bought into it, and I just didn't. I just didn't pick it up. I know a lot of kids that. Well, my, my daddy said this, so they spouted the same nonsense uh-huh. as if their parents were infallible and knew all the right things to say, and that's just the way the world was, right? And not me. I looked at that and, and walked away from that. Yeah. So, and that's part of the reason why I really enjoy being in the kink community, because 
You don't get that. Song. Well, you get that, but it's negotiated. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, if you get that, it's been negotiated ahead of time. Or, yeah. or you're a woman, and it came as oh, a God. private message that they didn't think anybody else in the world would ever see. You so, just haven't met your true dom yet. Once you experience my penis, you will submit. So, Greedy, you've yes. told me stories before because you uh, you are the gatekeeper to your mistress. If somebody, yeah. if somebody wants to. What kind of messages have you... Oh, Has she fuck. received? Uh, there's there's the the typical shit uh, about you know you just haven't found the right the right dominant like uh, shock and I were just joking about. There's the submissives that think that just because she is a mistress that she is a dominant female that they can kneel and worship to her and that the, that she'll let them fuck her. Uh, there's and, and she's desperate for that attention. and that she's desperate for that attention. It's like. Seriously, assholes, go meet somebody. You know, here's a get fa- off your fucking computer. Go here's, meet somebody. Here's a fascinating aspect of men: is they look between their legs and they see an erection, and they're so fascinated with it they cannot <laughs> conceive that everybody else isn't just as fucking interested in their erection as they are. Fellas, they're not. I, not I, without prior approval. God damn it, consent and approval. That's the thing. I love. I love looking at new profiles, especially ones that reach out to my mistress and. They're 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 all it's all it's all the same message. Can I kneel at your feet, mistress? Can I kneel at your feet, goddess, etc., etc. Same bullshit, different line. And looking at their pictures, ninety percent of them, I swear to God, are dick pics. It's like they're so proud of their tiny little cock. They they just they just can't get over themselves. I am so fascinated by my penis. You must be too. Yes. Yes. So, something you probably haven't encountered. You may have shock uh, as you've been with on the range for a while. Uh, since I got my girlfriend and I got her uh, mm-hmm. on fit, the amount of white submissive men that, oh my God, my ebony mistress, oh. I've been waiting for you. My ebony goddess, may and I there, please serve you? There, There it is again. Misogyny at its best, racism at its best. It, it it goes both ways. Racism goes both ways. Definitely, you you can you can hate somebody of another or for being another race, or you, you can, can love somebody them. for another or for being another race, and it's every bit as despicable. It, it's the fetish. It's the fetishizing of an individual. That that's the only thing you can see. It's that yeah, you know what? Caramel colored skin's gorgeous. It's gonna be beautiful in a woman, mm-hmm. but. To only see that, yeah. and to only see that as the only fucking interesting aspect of a woman is, ooh, she's got the right color skin. Fuck, that's hot. That's uh, very short sighted. Yeah, very short sighted indeed. I, I, she had me uh, contact the person back on her behalf. Let's just say that he was not as um, nice when he found out <laughs> it was it was her uh, boyfriend that was responding. Oh. There's there's been very few people that have replied to me replying mm-hmm. to their messages to my mistress. They, they're they're to to their credit, there are, have been a couple of them that have honestly not known the protocol. You know, their their profile is brand new, and I'm I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that it's not just another profile. It's that they are brand new to the community. And they didn't know any better. And I'm, I'm happy to help them. I'm happy to point them in the right direction. Hell, I will take them under my wing and be, a me- uh, be, be the mentor for them. But when, when I reach out to them and I say, hey, I've been, I've, been, I've been told to reach out to you and ask you not to contact her. But I'm happy to answer any questions. And they say something to the effect of, fuck off, you arrogant prick. <laughs> I... I, I can't help not having any pity for them whatsoever. Now, Greedy, how can they call you arrogant without knowing that you're arrogant already? Well, because it's in the name. Obviously, if I'm greedy, I must be can, arrogant. Within the kink, kink community, certainly, but I think men in general, can we talk about what's a dangerous aspect of misogyny? What's that? How many of them? It, it, it is this anger towards women, this virtually oh. seething hatred that is only disguised long enough to get your dick sucked and or to get a, your fresh piece of ass. The guys that send the messages uh, to the private inbox about, oh, yeah, baby, we're going to have so much fun. You, give me your number so I can start, so I can do this and that, and I'm going to come, I'm going to give you the best dick you ever had. And the moment they're rejected, out comes the hatred. 
and uh-huh. the anger uh, and well, the seedy you, rage you towards women and oh you're a fat pig I wouldn't have fucked you anyway uh-huh. all this bullshit but what it what it implies is that if you were to find if a woman was to find herself alone with such an individual he would easily turn violent when he didn't get what he wanted okay so uh, fiend um, she mm-hmm. has on her personal Facebook has started. And she started this last year, I believe. She may have even said it on a previous episode. Um, oh, yeah, she did. Yeah, how she will just copy and paste the um, conversations that she has. <laughs> and it's amazing to see these guys start off, not all of them, but some of them start off all nice and cool. And all of a sudden, she's like, well, no, I'm not interested. Fuck you, you bitch. That's why you're fat. And I was like, what the? Where did that come from? It comes from an actual anger at women and almost a hatred of it but they have a they have a cunt so I have to pretend to be nice to them long enough to get my fucking laid right that is the mechanism behind that and it's dangerous and and if you think about women dating in that world where the minute you tell some a guy something he doesn't want to hear the out comes that seething, seething rage and anger mm-hmm. I, I, I don't I really have a lot of admiration for women that date <laughs> I, I have I have a theory on that matter. Um, I, I I can't help but wonder if the guys that do that suddenly feel threatened in their masculinity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's one hundred percent what it is. Yeah. I mean, how dare you not like my penis? I'm only worthy as long as you're worshiping my dick. Mm. And the minute you tell me you're not going to do that, I have to hide that by being uh, this this giant screaming. Baby, worthless. Prick. Who's technically dangerous? Yeah, the danger is real. I've heard stories, not personal stories, but I've seen like online and stuff like women that you know thought this person was great, and then they found out, hey, he's not quite so great. So I tried to let him down easy, and suddenly it turned into a very violent or very scary situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and you can see that you've you've probably seen some of the videos posted. Where women uh, are recorded walking down the streets in large cities, and guys are coming on to them and wolf calling and all that. And we, we, you know, in the past, people would tend to think, oh, it's just wolf whistles and stuff, <laughs> yeah. just guys being guys. But what's scary are the guy, the men that will approach a woman that's alone and start, hey, baby, hey, baby, come on, man. And when they don't respond, they start becoming angry and screaming and yelling. They were owed that piece of ass she was walking down the street. Mm-hmm. She should have given it to them. How dare that bitch not come through? So on uh, Netflix, um, just before Thanksgiving, I believe, there was a series called She's Gotta Have It. And it's about a black woman that lives a poly lifestyle. And mm-hmm. one of the episodes, one of the early episodes, she's doing this that. She's walking from a friend's place down the street to go home. And some random guy comes up and it's like, hey, 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 I'm talking, hey, I'm talking to you, bitch. Right. Get over and grabs her and just like yep. sends her just like, oh, dear God, I didn't think people did that anymore. Yep. You know, so that's the sort of thing that. That that um, individual feels entitled to her and to her body and how dare that cunt turn him down. Not, not even acknowledge him. How dare she? Have you all seen the uh, social experiment videos on YouTube about, uh, Women pulling cat calls on men and how awkward they look at it all. I have not seen. I haven't actually seen the video. You need to. You need to watch these. It's it's totally awesome. I mean, as 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 awful as it is when when men whistle and holler at women, you know, and try and get a reaction like that. It's it's hilarious. I mean, it's it's every bit as awful, and it proves a point that. Men can't take it? Uh Uh-huh. Men cannot take it. I mean, at at heart, we're all just a bunch of pussies. (laughs) Okay. All right. So, let me move on to that. I think... I See, this is a problem I have is I think the pussy thing, calling people pussies, I think (laughs) there's actually a drawback to that. It starts yeah. as it in preschool. The first insult one kid, one boy throws at another boy is about is you're a girl. Yeah. No, yeah. you're a girl. Yeah. And that automatically implies if you're not a boy, you're lesser than. And wow. when we use that insult, and we, it's been a common thing for a very long time. When we use that insult to call someone a pussy, the drawback is it instantly has the implication that to be female, 
to not be masculine and male is to be, is lesser. To be inferior. Yeah. Oh, no. And I think it's an insult that we as grown men should never use um, unless some guy's just acting like a bitch. But uh, <laughs> we, no, seriously, we really shouldn't use it because it just promotes that stereotype that to not be a man makes you lesser than the masculine. And that is that is not the case. And well, my thing is this. Off. A being a bitch doesn't necessarily make you a female. Being a bitch mm. makes you a lesser being, basically. Yeah. To call someone a bitch, yes. I want I w I wanna I wanna I wanna insert here. Uh, I believe that Betty White put it perfectly. I mean absolutely beautifully. The difference between balls and vaginas? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, balls are the most tender part of a human anatomy. A vagina, that thing can take a pounding. Right. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Betty White, we all love her. Can I, can I bring this back around to Keith? Yeah, please okay. do. Please so, do. For part of my personal journey. So, we're having this conversation uh, about misogyny and, and all the misogyny that I can I see tossed around and people don't even realize they're doing it. And here's the irony, because I, I like to think of myself as not being a misogynist and to promote non-misogyny, as it were, to promote equality because women are human beings and they're adults and they're fucking as smart as I am and they're amazing. And where would the world be without them? And yet, one of my hobbies is beating women and making them happy about it. Mm -hmm. But it is based on the concept of, I do nothing to a woman she doesn't consent to. Yeah. I do nothing to a woman she doesn't like. I will allow her to experience sensations. And one of those may be spankings or floggings or pain. But it's to bring her a state of bliss in an absolutely consensual manner. I have no interest in raising a hand to a woman. I've never raised a hand to a woman out of anger. And if, if by the way, ladies, if you're with someone that gets mad at you and slaps you, that's a really bad sign. Yeah. That is a really bad sign. The things we do in BDSM, the impact play, the striking, the pain and, uh, is that we give, is all to achieve a mind state. It is not to express our anger. Do not allow someone to... to express their anger through violence. That is not BDSM. But I do find it certain, certainly ironic that I'm a big fan of women. I promote equality in that aspect. I'm very conscious of misogyny in the world and, and hopefully by pointing it out from, I can at least shed some small amount of light onto it and make the world a better place. I tried really hard to, to ensure that my son isn't a misogynist. We're trying to make the world better in that way. And yet, I do tend to spank him a certain number of women and they tend to like it <laughs> you know here's my thing i'm gonna be honest when i first started doing stuff i was kind of timid i'm like i can do this this is this is okay and she's wait like, wait isn't this abuse <laughs> and she's like i give you consent to try i'm like yes <laughs> i didn't actually do that <laughs> that but, probably would have got me kicked out <laughs> but a, a good top in any shape or form a good dominant they will try things and they will start light and build their way up. Right. And they're looking for positive feedback. And if the experience for the bottom, be it female or male, is positive, then this is something we can keep in our toolkit. If the experience is negative, it's a destructive in any way, or it takes their head out of that, that uh, amazing, warm, fuzzy space that we're trying to create, mm -hmm. then we take that tool off the table. That's not a tool we'll use yeah. for, for this that individual, yeah, for, for that, that particular individual. Yeah. Because I've run into it where I'll try X, Y, Z with one person. They love it. And I try somebody's like, oh, no, never do that. It's like, I, I just thought maybe you would like it. It's okay. We won't do that anymore. We, we can consider it shock docs tip of the day. If you're a male dom and you get angry and you think you're going to strike your submissive, that is a bad sign, my friend. You That's need it. to reevaluate how you're conducting your BDSM, how yeah. you're conducting your DS relationship. I'm looking at the time, and we we here we do have a party going on tonight. Not yet, but so, soon the doors are just gonna fly open, and everybody's gonna come through. Why? Because everybody loves the Bakersfield King community, and the headquarters has proven to be an amazing space. Yes. Oh, and if you if you want to see that space, you should check out the headquarters profile on FetLife. Mm. The headquarters. The headquarters. On FetLife. Which I was surprised that wasn't taken. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to give you props for getting that. Yeah. Well, my, I was honestly, I was just surprised that 
I hadn't thought about it before now. You didn't have to pay some 12-year-old Ukrainian kid like $1,200 to get that from him in Bitcoin? No? Right. <laughs> well, not this time. Not this time. <laughs> now, next time somebody wants that, they'll have to pay me 1500 Bitcoins. <laughs> and, and another tip, by the way. So I had a conversation with a gentleman this afternoon via FetLife who wants to attend tonight's party here on New Year's Eve, kinky New Year's Eve at the headquarters. And I had to explain to him he hasn't been vetted. Vetting is an important process. Has he come to a Wicked Wednesday, which is one of our vanilla events that anybody can attend? No, he has not. Has he been to a Munch, which is one of our vanilla events that anybody can attend but happen only once a month? He has not. He didn't have any references from, say, TGIF, the group in Fresno, or Sin Club at the, uh, at the coast, or someone we already know and is vetted and we feel has a good handle on giving a recommendation. He's brand new. And the drawback to being brand new is that you have to invest some time in your community. Damn it, people. I've said this before. Get out to your local vanilla events. Meet the organizers. Shake some hands. Put on your best face. Get out of your sweatpants, show up, look good, be polite, go walk around the, the tables and the rooms and shake some hands and introduce yourself to people and strike up conversation because it makes you known. And being known and being vetted is what gets you into the fun events in a local community like this where we don't have a giant commercial play space down the street that anybody can walk in for $45. Well, what I was going to say is all that very true, very correct. But if you only have sweatpants, it's okay. Just go. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. True. I, I showed up in many times in my sweat shorts, and they welcomed me still. If that's all you have, wear your best damn sweatpants. <laughs> Hopefully, you have something else. But we'll see. We yeah. welcomed you, but we thought less of you for it. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I'm, you think less of me anyway. Buddy. I'm just telling you, as a grown man, there's a few things you should show up with at, at a munch or, or a social event, a meet and greet. So that you present a good face forward. One is a job. It always helps to show up with yeah. a job. Um, if you can swing your own transportation, it's a plus. Um, the best outfit you have that isn't a tuxedo, eh, don't, leave, don't bring the tuxedo. Um, but but sh clean up. Get a shower. Uh, put on clean clothes. Make sure they're not wrinkled. Hopefully not covered in animal hair. Um, come out. Uh, pets. Look clean and neat and tidy. Not Shake some hands. Pets. Smile. These things are, are, are really good tools in your toolbox if you're an unattached male, male trying to meet someone. Also, if you're a female, please w listen to some of those as well. True. Very true. I can only speak from my, my perspective in that. But Showers, yes. Help. Showers help. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. Shave. Shave. Wait. Yeah. What? Did somebody here shave or is it just me? Uh, I think it was just me. <laughs> All right. Well, at this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it, guys. Greedy, any final thoughts? Cut a what? Cut it here. Oh, wow. You I, said cut a guy. I, I, <laughs> I heard cut a guy, too. I, I, cut I, you, I cut you, man. I cut you deep. <laughs> God damn it. I left my knife in my room. I will cut you back. So, Greedy, final First, words? Final thoughts? Um, Don't be a retard. A retard? <laughs> Sage advice. <laughs> Shock doc, any final words? I, I just want to say thanks, guys, for having me back on. Um, I, I enjoy the experience every time. And, and appreciate you guys letting me rattle on and, and express some of the things that are important to me. Right, we do what we can. And this is awesome. Saying, as always, please go out there, enjoy yourself, find your local community. Don't break your toys. They have feelings, too. Scotch, scotch, scotch. <laughs> and Greedy is keeping me up with his drunkenness. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're out. Woo-hoo. Yay, I can talk again. Yeah! <laughs>